In this video, we're going to go a little deeper into MIDI recording. In this video, I'm actually going to do some recording. I'm going to show you some various recording modes and a lot of the options we have when we're recording with MIDI. The MIDI implementation for recording is pretty comprehensive in traction. I think you're going to enjoy it, but it's also very easy to use. So to get started, I'm going to set up a track for MIDI recording. We just covered this in the last video. So you just need to select the input you want to use. I'm going to use X key, which I've got set up. If I play a little bit on that keyboard, you can see that I have MIDI data coming in. There's no audio yet. We need to select a synthesizer. I just want a basic piano sound, so I'm going to go into my plugins. I've already filtered by synth. I'll use Easy Keys. Easy Keys has a lot of features for creating keyboard parts, but I'm just going to use it as an instrument in this particular example. So I'll grab the Easy Keys plugin from the browser, the plugins tab. I'm going to drop it on the mixer into the first position right here, like this. The UI comes up, and now I should have a piano sound. If at this point when you play you don't hear anything, make sure that you've got it enabled. And then on the actual input itself, right here, check to see that you've got enable end to end so that you can actually hear through the plugin. Now in order to do recording, this works very much like recording audio. You enable the track for recording using R. And then the next thing we need to do is just either on the transport area, click the red record button or use R on the keyboard to start recording. I'm just going to do that, and play a few notes to see if we're actually recording any MIDI data. All right, so that actually worked. We recorded data. If we wind back, you can hear that it's playing back. So that all worked, but we didn't hear the click once I started playing. So let's just check the click track settings. This works exactly like for audio. It says pre count length set at two bars, which is fine. And then we just need to turn on the click track. So it wasn't actually on. We were only getting the count in. So with it set that way, all I need to do is select that clip and delete it. And I'll try it again and see if I can get slightly more coherent chords in there, just a couple bars so that we have something to work with. With that set up that way, I'll just hit record. I've got the cursor rewound. I've got the loop turned off, but the click is now turned on. So we can use that as a reference. All right, so that's a recording of just some basic piano chords using traction, using a MIDI clip. And that worked just fine. We can actually zoom in a little bit on this. And you'll see all the actual notes are in here. You can see that it's lined up with the bar. This particular chord is lined up with the bar because I was using the click track for reference. So there's the entire part, the series of chords. And this is called a piano roll view. And you can see that the notes of the piano are organized along the left. And then the individual performance is organized on the timeline, just like you'd expect. The length of these represents the length of the MIDI notes. So that's what the MIDI data looks like. We also have some tools to work with velocity, and we have some tools here to work with moving the notes, painting notes, deleting notes, and then a draw tool to put them in, which we'll work with in the editing video. Now, if I click back on the MIDI input, we have some options for recording. And you'll see the important one here is the action, merge newly recorded MIDI data into the existing clip. So if I enable recording again, just play a note here, I'm gonna overlay an additional note onto this part. So you can actually layer up parts. It's really useful for drum parts, but I'm gonna demonstrate how this works if you leave the action set to the default, which is merge newly recorded MIDI into any existing clip. So I'll go into recording again. All 
All right, so what I did is I played some C notes and I just played them. And what happened is they wind up being added to that performance. So now I've stacked this low C along with the original chords that I played. If I were to happen to hit Control Z or undo, you can see it takes out that last take and then Control or Command Y will put them back in. So that's a way you can use it to layer. Now, if you wanted to replace what you played in previously, then you can change this to either replace existing clips. There's also overlay new clips. So replace existing clips will work like this. So I'll just rewind, kind of play in this same part again, and I'll just leave it in this mode here and you'll understand how this works. All right, so you see what happened here is now this clip, which this is what's left of the original clip. If I just pull this to the side, you'll see that it's actually overwritten this original clip and it's, or it's moved it out of the way. If we reveal what's behind here, you'll see that the data is still in here. That's from the original one. It actually moves the original, basically erasing it from underneath. So you don't ever get anything overlapping. All right, so that could be useful in certain situations. I'm going to undo that a couple of times to get back to this. And now if I click here, you click on the input to find the setting. Now you can change this to overlay new clips containing newly recorded data. That means you'll get another clip stacked on top of the original. So I'll rewind and show you how that works. All right, so you can see here, if we move this out of the way, you'll see that the original clip is still under there. So these clips are now overlapping like this. Let's rewind and see what happens when you play it this way. Really, you're getting both are merged together, but at least for me, I rarely would work that way. There's also end-to-end -end from this device, but don't actually record. That is more of a special case, which I'm not gonna get into in this video series. So I'm gonna put this back on merge newly recorded MIDI into existing clips. And I think that when you're getting going with traction, this is probably the way to go. All right, so another interesting feature is input quantize. And that's located right here. Once we click on the input for the MIDI input and then click on quantize over here, you can see that there is divisions of beats. And this is how you want to break out the beat. It is not like if you want to record to an eighth note division, you would set this to eighths. That's actually breaking a beat into eight parts. Much finer division than you probably expect. So what I'm going to do is set this to one beat. That means quantize to a quarter note. If you wanted to quantize to eighth notes, you'd set this to one half, which would cut your quarter note division in half. And that would be an eighth note quantize. Quantize to 16th notes that's one quarter. So it's not difficult, but it's just a little confusing when you first see this. So I'm going to set this to one beat. I'm going to record this part playing the, with quarter note. I'm not going to try to keep the timing right because I want to show you how it will kind of quantize that input to adjust it uh, appropriately. All right, I tried to drag it a little bit and play a little off the beat. It's not that hard to do. And then rewind and let's see if it quantized it. Now in playback, you'll notice that it's not a really natural sound because the quantizing quantizes both the note start and the note ending. So the note will sound a little stretched out sometimes. Let me just show you this, but this is useful for certain kinds of drum programming. And let me just play this back. Now there's other ways to quantize and traction that give you a little more control than that. So input quantize can be really useful. I use it more for drum programming because I like to see the nice full beat like this where the both the beginning and the ending of it are quantized and it kind of fills out each division like that. 
So it's important to know that that's available. So that's an introduction to MIDI recording. Some of the options you have on setting up the input and the input modes for MIDI recording, as well as a quick look at input quantizing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.